Does the new Yukon have enough room for three adults back here? I'll tell you. And remember, subscribe. America. Our roads are wide, gas is cheap, so the all-new GMC Yukon will thrive in the land of the large, home of the huge. For families that explore the wilderness, tow big toys, and uh, head to Olive Garden, Yukon does it all. This is not a crossover like Highlander, Telluride, Atlas, or Enclave. It's a truck with body-on-frame construction shared with GM's 1500 series pickups. The big deal with Yukon and all of General Motors' new truck-based SUVs like Chevy Tahoe and Suburban is that they all run with rear independent suspension now. That means better cargo room, better ride quality. Win-win. Win number three, this. The interior was disappointing in the Sierra Denali pickup. Yukon's borders on swanky, and this is not the top trim Denali that gets a unique and more spendy looking cabin. GMC has dropped off the new AT4 model for the day. It gets rugged trim, all-terrain rubber, two-speed transfer case, actual skid plates, and not just cosmetics, and the international symbol for ruggedness. So yeah, they gotta be red. Ford's Expedition has bragging rights on a five-link design, but the four-link independent suspension is a welcome change. This truck has the optional adjustable air suspension with four inches of travel and self-leveling. On AT4, the latest in magnetic ride control that instantly alters the shock absorber damping rates is standard. For a 5,700-pound truck, Yukon is mighty docile. The independent rear suspension makes a huge difference in the ride quality, much improved. Then, add air suspension and magnetic ride control. This big boy really drives nicely. One thing though, hit a big bump and the chassis gives you a little bit of shimmy in it. Yukon's wheelbase is nearly five inches longer. Overall length is up by six. Not my first choice for crowded urban driving. This is a large machine, and it feels like it from behind the wheel, but gotta say, it is composed, it's comfortable, it's quiet. This would be a great road trip vehicle, except for the gas bill. Yeah, fuel economy. This is my average, and it should be no surprise, considering it's heavy and has the drag coefficient of a barn. You didn't expect Prius-like fuel economy, did you? Uh, by the way, if you don't want to burn gas, GMC will have the all-electric Hummer coming soon. Can't wait for that. Dynamic fuel management allows the engine to operate on as little as two cylinders. It's completely seamless. A good time to bring up engines. Three are available. Most models come standard with this 5.3 liter V8, the smallest gas drinking engine in the lineup. It pumps out 355 horsepower and 383 pound feet of torque. A 420 horse 6.2 liter V8 is exclusive to the fancy Denali, and inline six Duramax diesel is optional. The 15 inch head up display is lovely with a number of display options. No more stock controller. The 10 speed transmission gets this arrangement and I have to say it takes some time getting used to. Any manual selection is done here. The optional active response automatic four wheel drive system is bundled with an electronic limited slip differential. Powertrain note, you can't get the diesel engine in all models. For example, not available in the AT4 here. Can't have everything. The 5.3 liter moves out well. The engine note is deep, but distant and hushed. No doubt about it, a lot of people will like the sound of the V8 engine. Hear that, Ford? Depending on model and equipment, Yukon tows anywhere from 7,500 to 8,400 pounds. For a large box pushing through the atmosphere, Yukon has little to no wind noise, and sitting up high, I mean really high, visibility is next county good. However you feel about the transmission buttons, the 10 speed is very smooth. So Yukon isn't exactly a lightweight. Uh, let's check the brakes. Uh, that's impressive. This comes to a stop right quick. Brake pedal, a little mushy though. 
Fortunately, automatic emergency braking is standard, so the Rhode Island-sized grill is less likely to be the last thing pedestrians see. The Sierra pickup was launched without adaptive cruise control. That's an option on Yukon, but only for the Denali? That's a fail. Lane Keep Assist, standard on most models, allows for a good amount of wandering between the stripes. The detailing and materials of the AT4 are a grade higher than the outgoing Denali. This seam on my pre-production vehicle is the only detail to disappoint my eye. It's nice in here. At an as-tested price of $77,000, I would hope so. There's nearly 11 grand worth of options here. This is $1,500. A premium media package that adds navigation, wireless CarPlay and Android, plus an impressive mid-row entertainment system is $2,500. The white frost paint is $1,100. There's an impressive number of places to stash everything that families will need. <laughs> Maybe a second family. A powered center console creates the perfect place for a purse or backpack. There's a hidden drawer that uh, thieves now know about. Sorry, just doing my job. There's even more room in the upper section. AT4 gets standard heat here. Same goes for the chairs that are vented as well. Large pilots will like these. Not a lot of side bolstering though. Yukon is roomy. No real need for the XL that's 13 inches longer. With bench seats in front and mid rows, the SLE model seats nine. Tri-zone climate is standard. Toasty cushions are an option. Again, loads of places to store stuff. With the built-in hotspot and tons of connections, an Xbox or Apple TV in here means you may never talk to the kids again. It's a shame Evil Twin can't be here. He lives for back seats like this. It's very, very flexible. And both seats do this for easy access to the third row. Let's do it. And the verdict is... Oh, this is so much better. The cushions are now high enough so that there's at least a little bit of thigh support. Let's put the seats up here. Oh yeah, I have enough knee room, foot room is okay. There are belts for three. Don't know that you'd want to make them all adults, but three kids would be fine. And I'm five foot nine, I've got enough headroom. There are USB ports and a spot for your Dr. Pepper, not completely austere back here. The seat belt that retracts from here might be kind of cumbersome when dropping the seat backs. A quick touch on design, AT4 gets a unique front end that improves its approach angle to 32 degrees. The big Yukon looks the part of a rugged SUV. In my keep for around 24 hours, no one had the chance to comment on it, so the only opinion you're gonna get is mine. I like it, especially the AT4. There's a lot of Chevy Traverse in the profile, not a bad thing. You'll want the power running boards. It's like scaling Denali to get into this machine. Kudos to the engineers for hiking the wiper up and under for a clean look. An observation, owners that forget what brand they're driving might consult a neurologist. That independent rear suspension opens up 66% more cargo space behind the third row, impressive. It also lowers the floor height for easier loading, and notice that it's very flat in here, and there's no need to run to the side to drop the mid-row. Just keep in mind, minivans are roomier and easier to use. For petite owners, this feature is mighty handy and keeps bumper smudge off the Levi's. Plenty of things here to make the space usable, and small touches like this are much appreciated. The outgoing Yukon had a hard time getting a good sized cooler in with all of the rows in use. That's no longer an issue. I could get just three packs of the two ply in here with the outgoing model, four with very aggressive scrunching. Now it's seven, fairly easy too. So the question is, will the power tailgate close? I think you need a little bit of a shove. Those sensors are kind of sensitive. That's allowed in this test. Let's sum things up with red light, green light. Green light. The new architecture makes the large Yukon easier to drive, easier to load, and easier to love in the rear seats. So glad GM is taking interiors seriously. The quality is easy to see. If you need towing, capability, and functionality, this truck delivers. Yellow lights? So the V8's great, but Ford Expedition's Turbo 6 is more powerful and can tow more when properly optioned. I'd put fuel economy and size in the red light category, but hey, buyers know that going in. All paint colors, other than plain white, are an upcharge.
Red light, hit a big bump, and there's a slight shudder through the chassis. It's not steel girder solid. Adaptive Cruise needs to be rolled out to more models. It's missing from a $77,000 vehicle. And that said, this is not the most expensive Yukon. An XL Denali can reach past 89 grand fully kitted out. But if you just need a roomy, capable workhorse, a rear-drive SLE begins at $52,000, though it would be hard to show restraint outfitting a vehicle of this size. Do you need a truck-based SUV? Well, maybe, if you tow a lot, but all you need is a lot of room and three rows. Something like Chevy Traverse will do you just fine. It's less expensive and more fuel efficient. As always, know your needs, do the research, and test drive, test drive, test drive. The GMC Yukon is a big rig with big improvements for families living large. While I haven't driven them, it's safe to say that much of what I've observed with Yukon can be applied to Chevy Tahoe and Suburban. Special thanks to Martin for helping out on short notice on a work day. He drives so I can shoot running footage, shoots the thumbnails for the videos too, and we discuss the vehicle while driving around and playing it safe. I am trying to be responsible. I'm not wearing a mask, but uh, we are social distancing. Martin Campbell is in the back. Um, he is wearing a mask. He's also probably 10 feet away. So I think, I think that works. Thanks, Martin. Thanks for helping. Also, I'm sure you noticed the haze from the fires burning on the West Coast. Apparently, folks in the East got a taste of it as it blew across the U.S. I believe in science and that climate change is real. So the irony of driving this vehicle on a day like today is as thick as the smoke. You should subscribe to this channel, really. I'm telling you this for your own good. You're at the end, so I'm assuming you enjoy it. And now time for the ending fun fact. A lot of you wonder why I always test the fancier vehicles. Well, part of it is the manufacturers give those to me. I don't really have much of a choice. And second of all, a lot of people buy them. 25% um, of Yukon sales are the top trim Denali. That's a lot of money, that's a lot of sales. So uh, it's not as if people don't buy the fancy trims. And uh, fun fact number two, uh, the oldest nameplate in automotive history, Anyone? It's Suburban. Now, that's a Chevy, but fun fact number three, there was actually a GMC Suburban in the 50s. So there you go. Fun facts all around. Thanks for watching. That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.